graph lists are extremely useful in Excel, whether to simplify data entry or to provide input values to functions when creating an analysis. Drop list can enable you to switch values, charts, or look at pictures, such as pictures of products, employees, students, flags, or maps. Dependent drop lists take the functionality to a whole different level. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to create dependent drop lists, where the contents of the second list change based upon your selection from the first list, which also enables you to look up different pictures. You can apply this functionality to a variety of work situations. So let's see how we build it from ground up in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have in row number one some country names, and below each country name, I have a list of cities from this country. I also prepared for this project, and in the maps worksheet, I have a map for each one of these countries. I resized and positioned the map so that it fits entirely into one single cell. Each map is on top of a cell so that the boundary of the map is entirely within each one of these cells. It's a matter of bringing pictures and repositioning and resizing them and, of course, adjusting the column width and the row height. Because this step is a little bit time-consuming, I prepared for it in the exercise file. I have the same exact concept in the flags worksheet where I have the flag of each country and the flag is sitting in a cell in a way that the picture fits entirely in this cell. It's on top of the cell because the picture is a floating object on top of the grid, but it's within the boundary of each cell. And then I have my destination worksheet and in the destination worksheet, I would like to create a drop list for the countries, and then I want to create a dependent drop list for the cities. So whenever I select a certain country, the contents of the second drop list change automatically. There are so many ways of doing this, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use a simple technique of classic functions. When I change my selection for the country, I also want the map of that country to appear automatically. So let's see how we build this project from ground up. I go to the source worksheet, and in the source worksheet, I want to start by naming each list of cities by following the country name in the top row. And to do that, I want to start by selecting the entire table, control asterisk to select the entire table, and then I can either go to the create from selection on the formula step or use the shortcut Control shift f3 The Create from Selection dialog box opens, and here I take the check away from left column. I just want to use the top row as a source for names, and then I hit OK. I can check. I click on the down pointing arrow of the name box, and if I select Canada, here are the cities from Canada. If I change my selection and select Egypt, these are the different cities from Egypt. My next step, will be using the top row, the country names, for naming the different pictures. I select the top row, and then I copy Control c and let's say I'll be using the maps. I go to the maps worksheet. I select the first cell in column A, and I want to paste the list of names, but I want to switch the row into column. I want to transpose. The functionality is available on the Home tab. If you click on the down arrow of the Paste command, it is this one. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Alt-ESE followed by Enter. Now I pasted the names. I wish I could name each one of these cells underneath each map by using the same name. But remember, we just used the same name for naming the cities in the first step. So I cannot use the same exact name so I'll be creating a descriptive name that I could use as well. So let's say 
I'm going to name each one of these the country name followed by the word map, like this, France map. And I want to continue naming all the other countries, so I'm going to use the flash fill technique to replicate the model by hitting Control E, and I would have created these names. Still, I did not use the names for naming the cells underneath, so I'm going to select the two cells in column B and C, extend my selection down to select all the countries, and I hit the same shortcut, Control Shift F3. This time, I want to use the names in the left column for naming the right column. I'm in fact naming the cell under each map. When I hit OK, I would have named these cells. Let me test. If I go to the drop list of the names, and let's say I select Canada, sure enough, Excel recognizes this cell by its name, on top of which the Canada map is sitting. Now I prepared for my project, but because later on I'll be referring to these two columns, A and B, in a VLOOKUP function, then it will be easier for me to name both columns. I selected the two columns, and another way of naming is to go to the name box, and I'm going to assign the name country map. I hit enter for the name to stick. And now I go to my destination worksheet, the final project worksheet. Here, I start by selecting cell A2, and I want to create my first drop list. A drop list is a data validation list. To create a drop list, you go to the data tab and click on data validation. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Alt-DL, and here I want to select a list, so I click on the down pointing arrow of the allow box, and I select list, I put my blinking cursor in the source box, and then I go to the source worksheet to select the names of the different countries. Here are the names in the top row, I select the top row. When I hit OK, I would have created my first drop list. Let's select, let's say, USA. For my second drop list, I want a list of cities. And remember that our first step in this project was to name the cities by using the country name. And this is what we see in cell A2. But Excel wouldn't understand automatically if I select A2 that what I mean is a named range, unless I put it in an indirect function. So let's create our second drop list. I'm selecting cell C2, and then I hit the shortcut, Alt D L, tab L tab. And here I want to say, I want to look at cell A2, but what I mean is indirectly a named range. So I type equal indirect. I open bracket and I select cell A2. I close the bracket and then I hit OK. Now if I check, now I see a list of cities from the US. But if I change my selection from the first drop list and let's say I select India, now if I look at cell C2, I see a list of cities from India. If I select Egypt, now I see a list of cities from Egypt. Let's select one of them. I'll be selecting the capital Cairo. My next step is to bring the map of the selected country. But let's recall that in a previous step, I named the cell underneath each one of the maps using France map, India map, Japan map, and so on. So I'll be using the name in column B in calling the map in column C. But what I have in the first drop list is the name of the country, not the name in column B. So I would like to use a VLOOKUP function which looks at the country name coming from the first drop list and accordingly extract the name of the cell from column B. Let's do that. I go to the destination worksheet and I'll be creating like a helper function in one of the cells. Let it be cell K1. I type equal V lookup and then I hit tab. My lookup value is the name of the country and then I hit comma. Remember we named the table array country map, country map, and then I hit comma. I need a return value from the second column, so I type 2, and it's an exact match, so I type 0. I close the bracket, and when I hit enter, it returns the name from column B, which is the one I used for naming the cell under each map. Now let's go to the next step of the project. I want to bring one of the maps as a sample, 
So let's say I want this Canada map, control C, and then I bring it to the destination worksheet and I paste it, control V. I can resize it, I can reposition it, and let's say this is the final destination. Let's wrap up. I created my first drop list of countries. Then I created my second drop list of cities, which changes based upon my selection for the country. But at the same time, I have a list of maps, and these maps are sitting on cells. These cells are named with a combined name that I created in the maps worksheet. The name consists of the country name and the word map, and that's the same name that I used for naming the cells under each map. Now we want to link both of them. When I select this, I want this map. When I select Japan, I want the Japan map. So I go back to my destination worksheet. And the final thing, I want to use this name inside a defined name. We used many techniques for naming. Create name from selection. We used the name box as well. And now we'll be using the defined name. I can click on define name, or I can use the shortcut Control alt f3 and in the define name, I'll be creating a name, my map. What do you want by my map? Well, I just want to tell Excel that the name you see in cell K1 indirectly means a named range. It does not mean the text Egypt map. So I'm going to use the indirect function one more time, equal indirect, and I open bracket, and I click on cell K1, and I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. Now cell K1 was just a helper cell, so I can go to the Home tab, and I can change the color to white, so no one will ever see this cell. The final step of the functionality is to recall the corresponding map. And to do this, I select the sample picture that I put. In my case, it's the Canada map. I hit the F2 key, and the moment I hit the F2 key, keep an eye on the formula bar. You see the blinking cursor in the formula bar, type an equal sign, and let's type the defined name, my map. When I hit enter, all the magic happens. Here is the Egypt map. Let me test the functionality. If I change my selection for the country and select USA, here is the USA map, and I see a list of the different cities of the US. I already noticed two problems. I'm not quite sure if you noticed them. I'm going to show you one more time. If I select China, now if I go to the second drop list, I see the cities from China, and at the same time, I see the map for China. There are two problems so far. Problem number one is this outline around each map. I want to get rid of it. And problem number two, when I change my selection from the first drop list, Although the contents of the second drop list change, but this cell still reflects the previous country. I don't want that to happen. I want whenever I make a change in the country's drop list, I want to clear cell C2. Let's start fixing the first problem. I go to the Maps worksheet, and in the Maps worksheet, all what I'm going to do is to click on the View tab and uncheck the grid lines now, if I go to the destination worksheet, I don't see the outline. To fix the second problem, whenever you change your selection from the first drop list, not only the contents of the second drop list should change, but also this cell should be clear, because the city that I see is from the previous selection. So let's see how we fix that with one single line of code in VBA, I'm going to right-click on the Sheet tab and select View Code. In the Visual Basic Editor, I want to create a worksheet event, so I click on the down arrow of the top left drop list, and I select Worksheet. Automatically, this event is created. That's a selection change event. I want to change it to a change event. And the change event will say, whenever you make a change in cell A2, clear cell C2. As simple as that. So I type if target dot address equals range a2 dot address, then what do you want to do? I want to clear the contents of cell C2, range C2 dot clear contents. And then I close the if statement and if.
I can indent my code and delete the first one, which is unnecessary. And I'm done. Let's test the functionality now. I'm changing from Canada to US. Automatically, this list clears, and I see the map of the US. And then from here, I can select one of the cities. I can switch, let's say, to Brazil. Automatically, I see the map of Brazil. The cell C2 is clear, and the list reflects the cities from Brazil. Let's select Sao Paulo. If I select a different country, let's say I select Canada. Now I see the map of Canada, and I'm going to select the city where I'm living, Toronto. And if you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and ring the bell to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thank you for watching and see you next time.